Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee, admin of Vandalist here at Salesforce, and this is how I solve this. In today's episode, Salesforce MVP Eric Prod shows us how he uses the power of the formula field and with a little help from automation to reflect a user's true time zone, also taking into account daylight savings time. Today, I'm with Eric Pratt, Salesforce MVP and Senior Business Analyst at Apon Pulsars. Hi, Eric. How are you? Hi, Jennifer. Very well. Thanks for having me here. Awesome. So, Eric, please share with us a little bit about yourself for those who don't know you in the community and a bit about your Salesforce journey. Yeah, sure. So um, I started my Salesforce journey about 11 years ago. Before that, I was in uh, I was in something completely different. Like I was in catering for 13 years. Got to be tired of it. Went too technical. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, found a job at uh, Salesforce Support. Then I became a consultant, um, delivery manager for Salesforce, and I'm back into consulting. And uh, I'm part of the new class of uh, Salesforce MVPs this year. Great, congrats. So t- tell us um, what the community means to you and overall, like how are you involved in the community? Yeah, the community means a lot to me. Like I love it. I really, really, really love it. Um, it helped me a lot when I, when I started to learn about Salesforce. Um, and to be fair, it still helps me. Like uh, sometimes I see some answers and I'm just like, wow, I would have never thought of doing it that way. Um, so, you know, I always remember my first steps in Salesforce and it can be a bit overwhelming. We were all beginners at one point. So I just decided to give back, you know, return the favor. And so I've been really active in it since 2019, roughly. And yeah, so I answer as much as I can, mostly formula questions. All right. So now we want to see what you came up with. (laughs) All right, then. So I'd say the easiest is if I share my screen. Awesome. All right. So I first need to do a little bit of setup. The first thing to do is to create a new object. I called it time zone here, and I added a few fields to it. So let me just explain what they what they are and what they do. First, this is the time zone name, just the, the name field as text. And each record will have the same name as one of the API values of the standard time zone field on the user record. And I'll show all that later. We then have summertime start it's a text field that just explains what the rule for when summertime starts in this time zone is so for example in dublin we can see that summertime starts on the last sunday in march at 1 utc or gmt then we have the summertime start date it's a date field here we have the highest date that the last sunday in march can be so Last Sunday in March means it can be between the 25th and the 31st of March. So the highest date would be 31st of March. Don't worry about the year. I just took one at random. It's not used in my solution. We have then the same fields for the winter, winter time. A quick checkbox for Southern Hemisphere and a few offset fields. So GMT offsets, how many hours ahead or behind GMT I am. And summertime and wintertime start offset is at what time compared to GMT does the switch happen? So here between it's one UTC, it's one for both of them. And then that was the hardest part. I had to create this file that I then uploaded to this um, to this um, to this object. So you can see I've got all the time zones that uh, Salesforce uses, and then all the data is needed. Some countries do not use the DST, therefore it just says NA, otherwise there is some data here. So I then created the same fields on my user object. I wouldn't show them on the user page. Here I am showing them just for for this demo. Mm -hmm. This was the initial setup. Now I need a system to um, to populate those fields on every on every user. So I had to create a couple of flows, very simple ones. The first one 
is a record triggered flow when the record is created or updated and before the record is saved, just trying to make it as efficient as possible. It's on the user and I've got a couple of, uh, of conditions. Make sure it's an all statement here. So I'm just making sure that either this uh, custom time zone, time zone name field is blank or the standard time zone uh, field is changed. All I do here is add a get record element. I retrieve the record in the time zone object where the name is the same as the name of the time zone on the user record. I just grab the first record and automatically store every field. And after that, it's very simple, just a quick assignment so that all my fields on the user record get the same data as the fields on the time zone object. So now one small issue with that is that historical records will not be taken into account in a record triggered flow unless you were to change that time zone. So I'm a big fan of automation. So I created another very simple schedule triggered flow that ran only, only once on the user object when my um, custom field is blank and is the same as the other as the other flow. I first retrieve the time zone record as needed and then update the existing uh, user records with the proper data. So one last piece of, se of setup to do is to create a formula field on the case object, and I simply ca called it created hour. It's, it looks like a big formula, and, but it's, it's actually quite simple. I mean, simple enough. And let me try to break it down. So the hardest part of the formula is this line here, up to here. So, here we use the weekday function. Weekday will return a number for uh, any day of the week. So Sunday will return one up to seven for Saturday. Here, if you look at it, I'll, I subtract one. So my Sunday will give me zero, Monday will give me one, Tuesday will give me two, etc. Now remember, I in my file, I'm using the latest possible Sunday when uh, we switch to summer or winter time. So here, I'm just taking this latest Sunday and I'm removing the number of days that this formula gives. So let me, let me take an example. If I take Ireland as an example, summertime starts on the last Sunday in March. And the latest possible Sunday is the 31st of March. In 2021, this, the 31st of March fell on a Wednesday. So I just go with 31st of March minus three. Wednesday, the weekday for Wednesday returns a four, and I subtract one. So 31st of March minus three returns the 28th of March, which was the latest Sunday in March. That's how. I calculate it. So now this formula reads as follows. If either one of my fields is blank, which means this, uh, this time zone does not use daylight savings, or I am before the summertime or on the same date or after the winter time. Therefore, if I am in the winter time, then return the hour of the created date and add the GMT offset. I divide it by 24 at the end because we're adding hours. If I'm in the summertime, the same, but here, I just add an extra one, an extra one hour. Now, remember when I said that um, for the Southern Hemisphere, I had this little checkbox, but I also had to invert the dates because their summer starts in our winter in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, and vice versa. So I had to invert their dates. I'm so sorry to anybody in the Southern Hemisphere, but then I have to counteract this in my formula with this line here. So 
in, I guess, our, um, our winter time, add an extra hour for them. In our summer time, I subtract another hour, just, just so this formula works. And the last two lines in each result is just so any number that's above 23, um, I remove 24 of it. So it, it only returns a number between zero for midnight to 23 for 11 p.m. And that's it. Now I have everything I need to create my report. I have the information on the user, the time zone, and the offset. I've got this formula on the case. So I can create a simple report. I've created one here that I've grouped by the, the created date and this created hour field. So now I can see that my, um, my, support, uh, my support center starts at six o'clock, so I need somebody at six. But I see that I get very busy around eight o'clock, so that's when I would probably schedule more staff. Mm -hmm. I just want to show you one last thing that I've done. So it's, a, it's the same cases that you saw on this report, but I created a, another formula field that only shows the time in GMT, which is my time zone in the winter. And if I were to look at this at a, as a manager, I would start, I would get my staff to start, like most of my staff anyway, to start at seven o'clock, whereas it only gets busy from eight o'clock. So maybe one person from six o'clock and then the rest of my staff at eight. And that's it. Wow, that's great. Like based on that formula and capturing the real time of the user, you're able to actually staff up at the appropriate time and not what, um, the other time would have been interesting. Exactly, exactly, yeah. That's great. So what a great solution for reflecting that user's true time zone in a formula. And so thank you very much, Eric, for being a guest on How I Solve This. Well, thank you very much for having me here. Formulas are an awesome admin superpower. Eric used a formula to reflect a user's true time zone so business managers can use that data to accurately staff the call center during their busiest time. Love that. You can always find videos like this at admin.salesforce.com and also by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Salesforce Admins, so you never miss another episode of How I Solve This. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Awesome admin.